into the thick of the NFL postseason. We're trying to bring you some perspective from the other sideline as well. Kind of know your enemy as the saying goes. And the Bills are getting to know this enemy, the Chiefs, pretty well. The two original AFL teams have played 51 times total, including the Bills 38-24 loss in the AFC Championship game a year ago. That was followed, though, by some revenge earlier this year in a 38-20 regular season win at Arrowhead. And joining us now with that Kansas City perspective is Ryan Tracy, host of the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Ryan, it's great to have you on. Uh, the Chiefs team that played the Bills this past October did not look like that well-oiled machine that we saw a year ago in the playoffs. But in the time since that game early this season, since Buffalo and Kansas City played, uh, the Chiefs have gone 11 of 13. They ob absolutely dominated the Steelers in the first round of the playoffs last weekend. What changed since these two teams met in week five? You know, really, they just got their act together. Uh, they got thrown for a loop in that last Super Bowl uh, with the way that defenses chose to guard against the deep pass in particular. That frustrated Mahomes. The pressure got to him. And it did carry over into the beginning of the season. I think pressure is definitely something that bothered him earlier in the year. Uh, a lot of new starters, a, a completely revamped offensive line. And it wasn't quite firing. When they played the Bills the first time, I, I thought pressure was part of the game. Clearly, with a couple of turnovers, uh, Patrick Mahomes himself just was pushing the topics too much, not taking what was there. And I think as you saw them start to smooth that out and relax into what they were seeing in terms of the defenses, the coverage shells, the pre-snap looks, everything settled into place. It took quite a while. Uh, in fact, the offensive line, I wouldn't say was at its peak until probably week 12. But once they got to that point, what you've seen is Patrick himself be a little bit more calmer in the pocket, understanding that pressure is going to develop around him and he can withstand that. And he's picking and choosing his targets a little bit more succinctly rather than trying to push his agenda to go down to the deep end of the field all the time. He's waiting for the opportunity to really present itself this time. And now I think he's settled into that rhythm. That's really the key difference, especially the last three, four weeks. Yeah, Mahomes had one of his worst games of the year when when the Bills and Chiefs played uh, early this season. Uh, a lot of people here hoping to see a repeat of that. Um, but there's also been a lot of discussion here that people think the Bills have specifically built their defense to beat a team like the Chiefs and, and how they play. Um, but the difference between, you know, week five and now is, of course, no Trey White for the Bills, the star cornerback. How do you think the Bills should go in approaching trying to stop Mahomes and company? You know, I, I think disguise friend uh, Poyer in that first meeting so long ago and then obviously with the, the incredible game that Micah Hyde had last week it's about letting them get in position to try to read and take advantage of those try to break on balls it gets difficult if you're not able to try to slow that early progression especially for the speed receivers and Tyree Kill and McCole Hardman it can put a lot of stress on those safeties and then allowing them to do that I think is key for the up front the edge rushers uh, for us so at Vanessa, uh, Jerry Hughes had a, a nice game last week. I think if they can vary their attacks, if they can stunt a little bit more than maybe they're used to, try to confuse some of the looks that Patrick gets because the offensive line has shown that they can deal with the stunning, they can deal with the exotic blitzes and that kind of thing. Blitzing Patrick in general doesn't turn out very well for opposing teams, but at the end of the day, it's about doing just enough to keep him from scoring touchdowns on each possession in order for your offense and what Josh Allen's able to do to really push that agenda. Ryan, we've talked with fans here who are planning trips to Kansas City. Bills Mafia definitely showed up uh, a year ago, despite it being in a really difficult part of the pandemic. What do you expect in terms of the atmosphere this Sunday? You know, Arrowhead is one of the toughest places to play in the entire NFL. Can a rowdy group of people visiting from, say, Buffalo make much of a difference? They certainly can. It's, it's all about contributing to the timing of, of when you make your noise. I think the environment there should be very interesting for Bills fans coming down, possibly for the first time. Uh, what goes on in the parking lots, uh, the tailgate atmosphere at Arrowhead is unmatched across the league, I'll tell you that. But it's also opportunistic. They understand there, there are smart fan base inside the stadium about when to make noise and when not to. And if there's enough volume of Bills fans, they can do the same. Uh, generally, the Chiefs have played very well away this year. So if they do get some of that extra fan noise and that kind of thing, it's going to be difficult to really phase them, particularly on offense. But it's definitely something that in that stadium in particular, you feel what the fans are doing. Uh, Ryan Tracy, host of the Locked on Chiefs podcast. Thanks for joining us for some perspective on the other sideline. We're not going to say good luck to you, um, but we will say uh, at least have a good game this weekend. Well, thank you for having me.
He said their tailgating experience is unmatched in the league. I think some people watching would politely disagree with that. This is our text line number 716-849-2220. You can send us any questions or comments to that.